Hi, my name is Jim Cosby. I'm with NetApp. I'm one of our Deputy Chief Technology Officers, supporting our civilian government customers as well as our partners for all of our public sector business. Hello, I'm Randy Pierce with Thundercat Technology and I am a Senior Cloud Architect. So there's a lot of different challenges in the industry today for customers about how they manage their data. Where do they keep their data? Traditionally, they've kept data in data centers on premise, if you will, and stored it and managed it very effectively there. But now with the cloud, that's the new way people are looking to manage data for the last five to 10 years. There's challenges around how do you get that data to the cloud and effectively manage it. And obviously security is paramount for any sort of these discussions, especially when we start talking about the cloud, right, and what that means. So obviously security is key, uh, needs to be performant, but also it's not a one-size-fits-all solution. So hybrid cloud is very interesting because it gives you a bridge to get from your traditional data center up to the cloud. So as an initial step, people start to take their data and figure, how can I move it near the cloud, but maybe not in the cloud. So hybrid cloud gives you that middle ground where you can keep your data in a data center near the cloud, yet you can leverage all of the applications and the compute and processing power in the cloud because that data center is dark fiber connected to the cloud. So after that, you can start to look into the cloud and think about multi-cloud. As we look at the cloud, what does it offer to customers? Again, each customer has different needs. So just because you could do something doesn't mean that you should do something. And I think that's key for that flexibility, right? Maybe it makes sense for some customers to have a majority of their data on premise. But with that flexibility to maybe burst or leverage some of the public cloud is definitely a compelling offer as we start talking to our customers about options. When you think about data fabric and the fact that it can help that data be anywhere that it needs to be to be processed, including from the edge to the core to the cloud, the edge being on premise or out in the field tactically, uh, the core could be on premise as well, a major centralized data center, and then the cloud as well to leverage all those applications and compute. And you think about artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, and deep learning and the fact that artificial intelligence requires that data in a lot of those places, if not all of them, it really allows the ability to do things at the edge like Internet of Things or capture small sensor data and collect that and then send it over to the core to process it there with fast compute, with fast storage. And NetApp and Thundercat bring that to the table together as a partner. And then lastly, you can also put that into a data lake in the cloud and leverage all the different types of software and, and products in the cloud, whether it be Lambda software, whether it be facial recognition software, et cetera. Really, when we start looking at the NetApp data fabric, I like to think of it as it allows us to go from data puddles to data lakes, right? And so now we're breaking down these data silos and we're bringing all this data into a central location, that data lake. And then as we're able to leverage a lot of the NetApp backend technology to do that. So the, the burden is very light. It's very um, something the customers are used to using, right? Again, path of least resistance, very compelling. And then once we have that data in a central location, that data lake, start doing analytics. It then allows us to have actual items that benefit the, the agency or business. It's very compelling. We're getting a lot of positive response from customers as we share that joint Thundercat NetApp story. So there are a lot of different sectors of the government and their IT data where this could help. You could think about healthcare is a very large area, right, where there's lots of uh, diagnostic processing that happens to determine the right medicines, the right cure for illnesses. Um, you can think about autonomous vehicles, right? We think of cars and maybe Tesla as a car we all see on the road every day now. But if you think about the military, they're developing autonomous vehicles, right, that can go out to the battlefield and do the job where you used to have people in harm's way. And now you've got that ability 
to protect people by having vehicles do that. So AI leads into that. It also leads into finding the bad guys, right? If you've got lots of sensor data, where is the enemy or the terrorist? And that sensor data can now be processed much faster and easier with the likes of technology from NetApp and Thundercat to be able to do that. This solution is confined to all the agencies, right? Whether it's civilian, DOT, DOD, or Intel. Um, and that's because while each one's a little bit different, they all have similar goals. And again, we go back to a lot of the data already resides on NetApp. As we look at the data, it is the lifeblood. That application is what, at the end of the day, the agency, the mission, the company care about.